Welcome back to the community, everyone, and thanks for being part of it. If you're new here, subscribe or consider it. It's free. And check out the website when you get time. Lots to see and do there. i got to start adding more to it. It's just been a little hectic. Uh, today, we are going to do a steering box refresh. Uh, I'm not, I don't have to disassemble mine completely because there's no play in it. It'll just need an adjustment, which that'll be in another film, how to adjust the steering box. And I'll integrate it in with something so it's not too short of a video, like 30 seconds. Uh, this one here was nice and tight, thankfully, but it's been on there since 1968. So we're going to take the top cover off, clean the whole thing, get the old grease out and refresh it and put a new gasket on, torque the cover properly, it matters and go ahead and uh, put new fill plugs in there. I'll go over something in a minute about the fill plugs. Also, I wanted to say hi to my buddy Jonathan. <laughs> Thanks for being a friend and being part of the community. I truly appreciate it. So let's get on this and we'll go over a couple of things and we'll clean it up and you'll see what needs done inside. Lots of words today, sorry, let's go. Here's our steering box, and while this was on the car, I checked this. So it, it, there was literally hardly any play. I can feel it moving slightly. Now, see, but you're not going to be able to see that. But I'm going to go ahead and adjust it once it's done on the car. Uh, here's the gasket. Let me show you here. That's the top cover gasket to replace when you remove the top. And here's the little fill plugs. And those are from Wolfsburg West. Now, one thing I will say is you can go a different route with this, okay? You have your two plastic fill plugs here. Now, they're going to break when you try to get them out of there. So I have to remove the top cover regardless because them little plastic pieces you don't want going down into the grease. So we are replacing it with factory covers, little plugs, I'm sorry. Now some people will do different. They'll tap these and put tiny little bolts in them and some will go ahead and tap them and put a grease fitting in. I'm not doing that today, to be honest with you. Should I? Probably but I don't really feel the need to, but it's a really good idea. Uh, we can always do a video on that later if need be. Uh, it was just like tapping the grease fittings for the ball joints and tie rod ends that you watched in my previous video about two, three videos ago. So it'd be the same process. Uh, okay, so what I'm gonna do first, I don't wanna break these plastic plugs out of there because if I do, then pieces of plastic are going to get down inside and it's going to be harder to get them out. Uh, so I'm going to clean this up first. I'll speed the film up pretty fast on the cleanup because it, there's no point in you watching me clean it. And as soon as I'm done cleaning it, I'll stop, slow the film down and we'll resume. Okay, get ready. All right, so what I'm going to do first is put it against the big wire wheel, the bench mount, and get the heavy stuff off of it. And then where I can't reach, I'll go ahead and use uh, my drill with wire wheel for the tight spots. Because we do want it to be cleaned up and nice. You don't want the dirt going inside of there if you can keep it cleaned up and then we'll open it. Okay, let's go. Enough talk. And here's some music for you to listen to while I'm doing this. Okay, this is gonna take a little longer than I thought. So I'll go ahead and pause the camera and turn it back on as soon as this is cleaned up. I don't wanna keep you watching the speed it up part forever. Give me one second. Okay, so it's not perfect, but I did clean the heavy stuff off just so we can open it up, clean it out and re-grease it. Uh, once I'm done and put it all back together, then I'm gonna do a final wire wheel and clean it real pretty paint it flat black or gloss black, and of course, remount it on the beam. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now, and we're going to break the lock nut loose. So I'm gonna put this in the vise. So we have a 17 millimeter 
okay? A uh, locking nut and then a flat bladed screwdriver. To, this is how you adjust the steering box. But when I take this apart, I want to count the turns that the lid comes off because it unthreads from this. I'll show you what I mean. So let's take this first. Oops. There we go. Didn't have it tight enough. Let's break it loose. Okay. Now, you don't want this screw to turn. You want it to remain exactly where it is for right now, okay? So, we're gonna spin the locking nut off because the locking nut just holds it in place. It doesn't do the adjustment. So, we're gonna take that off, okay? And the screw is still where it's supposed to be. Okay, just make sure it's don't turn unless you have some white out to mark with and know where it's at. We have 13 millimeter bolts here. And this is your cover. Get this piece of crap off there. I missed it. Like I said, I'm just cleaning the heavy stuff off and then I'll redo it whenever this is back together. Let's get the 13s off, okay. They broke loose fairly easy. The torque on these is only between 14 and 18 foot pounds. Not inch pounds, foot pounds. So we're going to take these bolts off and don't lose your little flat washers. They're the little curvy jobs. So make sure you don't lose those. And there's an importance when we put this back together of torquing these properly. And I'll show you why once I get it apart here. One more. Okay. I don't think this is just going to... Oh, maybe it did. Nope. <coughs> Why aren't you coming loose? Once the turn... Oh, let me see here. Half, one, half, two, half, three. So I know where it's at. Okay, so that's why it's compressed. So I'm going to go ahead and count this a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, almost 16. We're going to get it close, that's all. So 16 and then 3, because this, you can't see it, but it's pushing slightly. Okay, let me get a cloth. Let me just wipe this off a little so I can show you something. Now let me bring you up close and show you a couple things. Let me hit this with some brake clean a minute. And another little, where's my brush? I'm all over the place today. Okay. Now, as you can see, there's old grease in here and we're going to have to get it all out, clean it up, which isn't fun to do, and pack nice fresh grease in there, new cover, and so on and so on. So we're going to go ahead and start pulling the grease out. I'm just going to use a little brush, a pick, a screwdriver, anything. If you want, you can disassemble the steering box completely. I'll do that in another video, but there's no reason for me to do it right now with this one. So let's go ahead and clean the old grease out first. You can see the condensation and old crappy grease in there. So you definitely want to do it the right way. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is pretty much try to get some of this grease out. Although I don't think there's a lot in there. Let me tilt the vise. 
makes it a little easier. It's probably for the best to clean it thoroughly by taking it apart. But like I said, I just don't need to on this one. So I'm going to try to get as much of the old grease out as I can. And then go ahead and uh, blow it out with some brake clean. Blow it out with some air. And if you don't have a compressor, you can buy some compressed air in a can. It looks clean in there. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't splash the camera lens. <coughs> Whew. There is a lot of crap in there. We're going to go over something too. Some important things when I'm putting the new grease in. And I'll explain when I'm doing it. So you don't want to blow a seal lot. I'll explain. We're just trying to get this cleaned up a little. Get some of the old grease out. <coughs> Okay, what I'm going to do, I have to move the camera back. I'm going to go ahead and keep spraying. And, wow. And I'm going to get my air compressor nozzle and blow it out. So we're going to have to move the camera back so we don't screw the lens up. Give me one second. Okay, I have to keep you far back because I don't want this getting into the camera. So what I'm going to do is hold a rag slightly over it. Yep, it's forcing it up and out. See? Here, can you see? See how it's forcing the grease up and out? Okay, let me wipe that off. And then we'll continue doing that a couple times just to get all the old stuff out because when you this is a really messy job that's why I have really nasty clothes on today when you get the brake clean down in there which I'll do right now this actually is loosening all that grease up it looks pretty in there it's coming clean like I said, we're going to go over some important tips while I'm putting it together. And don't be spinning this around. Okay, because you need to know where it's at. That's soaking a little bit in there. <coughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue to do that. I'll pause the camera and then I'll get it cleaned up and show you what it looks like. So give me one second. Okay, this is all cleaned up inside. Nice and tidy and ready for the new grease. Make sure you clean this surface really, really good because you don't want, you know, from pressure, the grease or oil coming out. Here's your cover. We knocked the plastic pieces out, the plastic plugs. You didn't really miss nothing. You just take a little Phillips screwdriver and knock them out. Okay. And before we put the gasket on in the cover, at least start getting some grease inside of there instead of having to go through the little hole. So let's get that. Now here's two things I have here of what you can use. And of course there's more. This is extreme pressure Molly grease. Now it's the same stuff that you use in your CV joints, okay, for the IRS. And I have triple, or I'm sorry, double O grease, extreme pressure grease, okay? I used this in my last one on my Super Beetle, and no issues at all, no leaks. And of course, I didn't use this yet, but I used it on the, the CV joints. Very nice stuff. So, it don't matter which one you use. This will come out a little more thin when you're pouring it out, but how OO grease works, from what I read, is when you're turning your wheel back and forth, it thickens it up, is what it does. So we're gonna go ahead and put the OO grease in. 
So I got to straighten this up a little so it don't spill everywhere. I was trying to keep it tilted so you guys could see easier. But we'll just raise the camera up. Let's take our little lid off. Actually, I could take the whole spout off for now because we have a wide opening. And come on. It's been in a garage, so, and it's been below freezing, so it's cold. And, oh, here it comes. You can get this on Amazon is where I got it. Okay, let's, okay, let me stop there a second. Messy, messy. Anytime you're working with grease. Okay, let's get this down in there. There we go. It's going down in slowly. It's thick. And like I said, from what I have read up on this type of grease is when you're turning the wheel back and forth and the gears moving the grease, the grease thickens up. So I don't know who invented that, but pretty good idea. Okay, this stuff's like paste. Okay, let me put this on because I'm going to try to get it down in here. You're not going to be able to see this part, of course, but I'm sticking the nozzle down deep. There we go. Probably should have warmed it up a little, but I didn't think to. It's okay. Not a big deal. Quit complaining. I don't know if I can, I ain't gonna turn in here. Okay, let me pull it out a minute. I'm trying to just turn the gear back and forth so it pulls it down through, which it is doing. Yep, it's getting through there. That way we get all the air pockets out. If you see what I mean, it's dropping down. Nice and clean in there. I'm really happy with this. Simple adjustment and it'll be good to go. Now, an important thing here, don't overfill the grease. More is not always better. Because if you overfill it and then put your lid on and you start cranking the wheel and it's summertime and it's hot and it builds up pressure, you're going to start squirting grease outside of the shaft seal and you're not going to be happy. So, okay, now from turning that back and forth, it got down inside of there, which means I can add more now. Okay, you want to see? See, it got down inside of there now, so now we need to add more. When you're turning it back and forth, it's moving the gear around and that helps you get more in and get all the air pockets out. Heck, did I have it in there before? Just like that. Okay, let me add some more. If you put too much in, it's okay, you can get it back out. Use a rag and a screwdriver or whatever it takes. 220, 221. Whatever it takes. Everybody remember that movie? Okay. So, going to turn it back and forth again to get that down inside of there. You just want to get all that grease down in there. That's the main thing. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's put it in a vise and get ready. Get this excess grease off of here, as I'd mentioned. You don't want the gasket wet with it. It ain't going to hurt it, but you want it cleaned up nice.
Got some Permatex aviation sealer. I kind of like this stuff. And we'll go ahead and blob some of it on there just to hold it in place. This stuff's cold too. Very cold. Everything's cold, including me. Welcome to winter. Although I think we only got six weeks left, so the groundhog says. I guess it's not too bad. This winter seemed to have flew by for some reason. Went a little quick, but we're not over yet, so. Okay, quit complaining. Here's the gasket. I'm gonna put it, adhere it to the lid itself. Okay. And I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. Let's hope the gasket stays on there with the aviation sealer because I don't want it tearing. Put our screwdriver through. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, I'm only getting 15 out of it. Okay, and that's where we're going to end up <coughs> adjusting. <coughs> okay, so now take your bolts that you cleaned up. You cleaned them up, right? I hope so. I always wire wheel, clean the threads up, clean the heads up, clean the washers up because they go in a lot smoother. And if you don't clean the threads and there's grease on them, well then you're going to have an issue with the torque procedure because then you won't get the proper torque specification out of it. Okay, so. We are now going to torque the bolts. It's between 14 and 18 pounds. So I'm going to do 16. Right in the middle. There's that one. I mean, it's just a steering box cover. It ain't rocket scientist, but I like to click torque stuff where it's supposed to be. So. Okay, and what we'll end up doing is doing an adjustment on it, but not right now, obviously. I'm going to do that while it's on the car. So you want to put your lock nut back on so that you don't lose it. Okay, and then there is a cover that you remove on the car. Uh, each year is a little bit different to uh, go ahead and do the adjustment, but we'll do that, don't worry. I'm gonna take a peek inside. Yeah, that's high enough. I don't wanna overfill it. Like I said, if you overfill it, it's going to cause pressure and it'll start squirting out the bottom sill. So don't overfill it, leave some air, some room for it, okay? Uh, I got my new plastic plugs. I'm not putting them in yet because I'm going to let that settle down and look in again after a couple days since it's not going on a car yet. So I don't want to put the plastic plugs in there. You can use grease fittings if you tap it or you can tap it and use little bolts. Whatever you want to do. I just stick with the stock plastic cover. So Okay, so that's a steering box refresh. Uh, it's really not that difficult to do. So if you have your beam down and you have to take your steering box off to put it on, you know, the next one or what have you, it's probably worth you taking your time and doing that. Or if it's been 50 years, it really can't hurt to do this and put fresh grease in there so it moves nice and smooth. Uh, like I said, don't overfill. Leave some air gap in there so that you don't push it out the seal when it gets hot and expands. 
You can use what you want. You can use uh, extreme pressure molly grease. I use the OO, multi-purpose high pressure, and pretty much it's not a bad job. Uh, to take the whole steering box apart isn't horrible. The worst part is getting the pitman arm off, but you can do it. You can run a tool at AutoZone or Advance and uh, pull it off. But there was no need for me to do this. As you've seen inside, it was nice and clean. When it was on the car, it didn't have much play, you know what I mean? So there was really no reason for me to do that. Uh, other than that, we do have the engine block to still take apart. I didn't do that yet, so we'll do that next week and see what this block looks like because I'm going to end up sending both blocks out to be checked, line board, cleaned, and bored and stroked. Okay, anyhow, those got to come apart. We got to split the case and check this one. So I will go ahead and do that next week. And another thing, every time you're done with your torque wrench, loosen it all the way down to zero pounds. You don't want pressure on that inside of there. And I want to give a hello to Cars and Coffee Kings. Take a look when you get a chance. Pretty cool dude. Alrighty, it's time to close out the video today. And thank goodness because I'm cold and I'm tired. I can't wait till spring. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. It's over now. Get your butts in the garage and get to work.